he, Daniel's the founder of uh, Burning Tours Colombia. He lives in Manizales in the central Andes. And he graduated in veterinary medicine and animal science. He's a strong conservationist and he acts as a consultant for uh, many of Colombia's environmental organizations and also private nature reserves. He's a great birder. Uh, he's one of the main organizers of the eBird Big Day event, uh, which brought Colombia in as number one country uh, in the uh, Big Day. Uh, his team detected 1,446 species in one single day. I think that was a couple years ago. Danielle can correct us if they beat that number. He's an artistic photographer. Uh, you can see some of his work on Flickr. And so it's with great pleasure and huge anticipation that I am going to mute myself and listen to Danielle. Okay. Um, hello, guys. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, we're going to get started. Um, okay, um, thank you very much, Bob, and uh, <clears throat> thanks to all of you. Uh, special thanks to Steve uh, Initiative to have me with your uh, group. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is to uh, present briefly some of the birding uh, panorama in Colombia. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start uh, talking about the Global Big Day, as Bob just uh, said. Uh, as you well know, Global Big Day is organized by uh, Eber from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And it's a big event for all birders. And it's a single day, a 24 hour birding day. And it's an open invitation. And uh, <clears throat> for many years, Peru was the country with the most uh, number of species uh, registered in the Global Big Day. And uh, <clears throat> four years, years ago, a group of friends, uh, we decided that we should not be on the last positions of the Global Big Day, uh, especially because, <clears throat> as you as you well know, Colombia is the country in the world that has the largest uh, number of species of birds, and so we organized uh, a heavy team of birders to <clears throat> beat Peru in 2017 for the first time. Uh, Peru had been the champion in the previous years. And uh, in that year, uh, we came first. And this, this is the map of Colombia that you see now. <clears throat> I'm, I'm calling my, my talk uh, Colombia numero uno, Colombia number one. I'm bar borrowing, I'm taking this, uh, title from uh, Dominique Michel, who is a British uh, bird editor and uh, <clears throat> journalist. And when, when he came to Colombia, he uh, prepared uh, an, a very nice article about his experiences, and he titled his article, Colombia Number One. <clears throat> and I love the title. <laughs> anyway, uh, the map of Colombia is done with photos of birders that participated in the Global Big Day of 2017. There's no photo uh, repeated there. And uh, the following day and um, the following year, 2018, we did the same effort. And again, we beat Peru. Uh, we come in first. <clears throat> in that year, uh, we registered uh, 1,546 bird species in a single day. And uh, not happy enough, in 2019, we did another effort. And again, 
uh, we occupied the first place. <laughs> And we registered uh, 1,590 species in that single day. And uh, this year, we did it again. And uh, the pandemic got us, you know, uh, sequestered in our homes and farms. <clears throat> but nonetheless, uh, we registered uh, 1,440 species. Uh, the point that I want to transmit with this um, um, summary of our global big days is that Colombia not only has the birds, it also has the birders, okay? And uh, in the following chart, in this chart, uh, you can see the results of this year. Uh, Colombia was first. Peru second, Ecuador third, then Brazil and the United States. <clears throat> and it's, it's very natural that Colombia can come first because it has the greatest number of bird species. But to do that, you need the people, you need the bird groups. And on the right side of the chart, you see the number of lists that birders all over the world submitted to eBird on that day, on this global big day. And you can see that the United States presented more than 68,000 bird lists that day, followed by Canada with uh, 11,744 lists. But surprising, Colombia was third with 7,197 lists, which means that there were a big number of birders uh, chasing birds that day. And uh, fourth was Panama, then India, Venezuela, and so on. <clears throat> so it's, it's very nice for us in Colombia to have this love and passion for birds. And uh, we enjoy them and we like to share them. And uh, I want to present briefly how Colombia is um, geographically organized. This is our map. <clears throat> Colombia limits with Panama in the Darien, with the Pacific Ocean towards the west, in the south, we limit with Ecuador and Peru. And towards the east, we limit with Brazil and Venezuela. And up north, our boundary is the Caribbean Sea. So Colombia is located in the very tip of South America. And it's the bridge between North and Central America with South America. And our geography is very complex. And that's the main reason why Co Colombia is so biodiverse, not only on birds, but in nearly all the other taxa as well. And I'm going to describe briefly this complex geography because it's very important to understand it. When the Andes gets into Colombia, coming from Ecuador, something very amazing happened. The Andes splits into three mountain ranges or three cordilleras. So we, we don't only have a single chain, chain of mountains, we have three chains. One is the Western Andes, which blows flows from south to north. The other one is the Eastern Andes, which is very wide and tall, and it flows up towards Venezuela. And in between the Western and the Eastern Andes, there's the Central Andes, 
where I live. I live in Manizales, a mountain city in the west, in the central Andes of Colombia, where the arrow is. In between the central Andes and the western Andes, there is a valley formed by the Cauca River. The Cauca River flows from south to north, and it empties into the Magdalena River close to, to Barranquilla, to the city of Barranquilla up here. And in between the central and the eastern Andes, there's the largest river in the country, in this part of the country, which is the Magdalena River and the Magdalena Valley. So we have three cordilleras, two valleys, and this, this becomes very complex geographically. On the west side, towards the Pacific Ocean, we have the Chocó region. The Chocó region is a jungle region. It is shared between Ecuador, Colombia, and Panama. You have the Andean region, which I just described. A third region is the Caribbean region up north. That's where Barranquilla and Santa Marta are located. And then towards the west, we have the Amazon region, which is shared with Peru and Brazil and other countries. And on top of the, up, on top of the Amazon, we have the Orinoco region, which is shared only between Venezuela and Colombia. So Colombia has five distinct regions. The Andean region, you know, is characterized by the mountains. This is a photo that I took uh, from the plain. Uh, and uh, this photo shows uh, the snow mountains. You know? in the Central Andes. Uh, this is a typical view of the Andean uh, region in Colombia, dominated by tall, uh, big mountains. And uh, the landscape is formed by uh, Andean valleys. And there's a lot of rivers that flow from the mountains towards the oceans. This is where the coffee region is located. All of Colombia's coffee is produced in the Andes. This is a typical coffee farm on the left. There's a lot of cloud forests. On the low right picture is a view of my hometown. This, is, this city here, is Manizales at 72,000 feet. In front of the city, you see a big mountain. That's the Western Andes. And behind this mountain is the Pacific Ocean. And that takes us to the Pacific region. The Pacific region, the Chocó region, is extremely humid. It has the biggest amount of rainfall uh, in Colombia. And something that is amazing is that the jungle meets the ocean. And behind the jungle, in the far distance, you can see the mountains. So the Chocó region has two distinct uh, uh, features. One is the lowlands with a lot of jungle, and the other one is the mountains. And the mountain is called the Mountain Chocó. And through the high humidity, it becomes extremely biodiverse with a lot of birds. Then we have the Caribbean region, which we all recognize. Uh, as a touristic uh, destination. 
uh, is a very biodiverse region as well because it has uh, a combination of uh, humid uh, forest with uh, dry or semi-dry uh, peninsulas and uh, deserts. The Orinoco region, which is shared only with Venezuela, is perhaps, to my taste, the most beautiful region in the country. The Orinoco River flows from south to north in the boundary between Colombia and Venezuela. And it's dominated by forest, a gallery type of forest. The forest is present only along the rivers. And behind the forest, you have an open savanna. Uh, and there's a lot of big rivers in the Orinoco region. And the avifauna is extremely rich. It's an excellent destination for any bird photographer. And of course, we have the Amazon region, which we all know uh, through the Amazon jungle. And uh, Colombia has a vast expanse of Amazonian forest. And what I will say, just as an introduction, is that the Amazon forest is not homogeneous. Within the Amazon, there's a lot of different type of forests. So you have terra firma forest, which is never plotted. You have the Varsea forest, which is flooded. And you have many other type of um, ecosystems, um, like for example, the white sand forests, which are unique and very special. And as if this was not enough, up north in the northern part of Colombia, there's an isolated mountain massive called the Santa Marta Mountains. And the Santa Marta Mountains is completely independent from the Andean region. It evolved differently. It has a different geo geo uh, geological formation or origin. And it is completely isolated from the rest of the mountains. And it evolved in isolation. And 23 endemic bird species um, live in Santa Marta Mountains. Um, a brief introduction of myself. <laughs> um, my mom was kind enough to put on the walls of my bedroom a very nice collection of bird images of uh, John James Audubon. And since I was a kid, I went to bed looking at those birds drawn by Audubon. And the following day when I woke up, the birds were still there hanging from my from the walls of my bedroom. And I think I, I fall in love with birds mainly through those images. Beautiful color uh, paintings of John James Audubon. And I had an uncle who was a professor of mathematics at Vancouver University in Canada my uncle Rodrigo Restrepo. He was a very good birder, very passionate about birds. And whenever he came to Colombia in his summer vacations, he would take his nephews into bird walks. And I loved to uh, go birding with my uncle since, since I was very small. So I think those two experiences uh, sort of uh, incubated 
my love and passion for birds. Um, I studied veteran, veterinary medicine. I did a master of science degree at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. And uh, I practiced as a DPM, but <clears throat> I really enjoyed uh, birding always. And nowadays, I'm done with my profession and I am 100% ded dedicated to birding and to bird photography. Uh, very briefly, I use a Nikon equipment. I have all, always been with Nike, always been with Nikon. I use a 600 meter, millimeter prime lens, uh, autofocus VR, excellent uh, lens. Uh, I have used uh, many different body uh, bodies. Um, uh, I'm now using a D850. I always use the tripod gizzos. I think they are the best for field work. Um, I use a Jongbu uh, gimbal type of head, which Peter Howard Lishin introduced me to. Excellent head. And uh, I have the 1.4 and the 1.7 multipliers, but I don't like them much, really. I think they harm the image a lot. Um, I never shoot handheld. All my photos are taken from a tripod. And uh, only recently I have started to use a short lens, a 300 millimeter lens coupled with a 1.4 multiplier, mainly because I do um, birding trips as well. Not only bird photography, but birding trips. And as you well know, it is impossible to combine photography with fast birding. And I was missing a lot of uh, opportunities. And when you go birding, sometimes special birds just pop up in front of you. And uh, I, thought, I, th I, thought I thought that I should start using a short lens uh, that I can carry on those trips and take those opportunistic uh, photos. And uh, it has worked fine. Uh, it's good. I use a Kowa scope. I highly recommend Kowa. Excellent quality. Uh, <clears throat> probably better than the other top brands. Um, and I use uh, Leica and size beams. So now the birds. <laughs> uh, all the, all the bird photos are mine, except some very nice images that I have borrowed from Peter Harrelishin, from Steve Samick, from Bob Lewis, and from Doc Chisman. They all have been with me on bird photography trips. And I know that they have better images than mine for many of these birds. So I borrowed some of their photos as well. So good luck to them. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start with this red-headed barbet. Uh, beautiful bird. They come uh, relatively uh, easy to bird feeders. And um, they provide uh, excellent opportunities. This is the female which I find very elegant and even nicer than the male. This is a blue cap tanager, always uh, a target bird for uh, photographers. It's a mountain bird and they come well to the feeders as well. Uh, saffron crown tanager, I'm, go I'm going through uh, tanagers that are uh, mountain inhabitants. <clears throat> Blue wind tanager, uh, incredible uh, bird. It also comes very well to the feeders. And the cotingas, cotingas are, are fruit eaters. Uh, they are extremely colorful and beautiful. This is a green and black fruit eater. 
uh, there are many species of uh, fruit eaters and cotingas in Colombia. Uh, this is the male, and this is the female, which is very cryptic, as you can see. <clears throat> this is a barred fruit eater. Uh, the previous species, the green and black fruit eater, they do come to feeders. Barred fruit eater do not. You have to photograph them in the forest. This is a very special cotinga, <clears throat> the red raft fruit grove. It is widely dis uh, distributed in the Andes, uh, from Colombia and Venezuela all the way south <clears throat> to Argentina and Chile. But it's um, very local, uh, very few populations. And <clears throat> Colombia has perhaps the best place to photograph and to see this beautiful Cotinga in the Otunquimbaya Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, <clears throat> where uh, Peter, Bob, Steve, Doug, Gil, Janie, they have all been there. And <clears throat> it's a lovely bird. It pro provides excellent photo opportunities. This is an orange-breasted fruit eater from the mountain Chocó. This is a very special target, not only for bird photographers, but for any bird. Any lister uh, wants to have this bird in his list. <clears throat> Excuse me, Daniel? Yes? I'd like to interrupt for a second. Um, we're getting a little <clears throat> a, a, a warning message. Do you have a window in front of your slide deck that's open in front of your slide deck, partially blocking it? Oh, I see. Yeah. What should I do? Um, we want your, the, the window that, you're, that has your slide deck, it should be on top. So just click on that window so it's on the top. We're getting an message that says, please move this window away. So there's some other window that appears to be blocking your, your slide deck. Does that make sense? But I don't see how I can move it. Okay, let's continue okay. then. Sorry to interrupt you. It's, it's not a problem. We can, let's just keep going. We can still see your photos fine. No, I don't see how I can move it. Sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Should I continue? Okay, this is the Andean cock of the rock. You probably have heard about the bird and maybe you have seen it in trips to Ecuador and other countries. It's a beautiful uh, Andean bird. Uh, they lack and uh, there's a very special lack in a small town near Medellin uh, called uh, Jardin. Every day at 5, 4.30 in the afternoon, about 15 males uh, join um, a small space in the forest and they display for the females. And uh, you can have them only 15 feet away from you, making these jumps from one branch to the other and making these loud calls to impress the females. Uh, it's extremely special bird, very nice. <clears throat> I photograph not only colorful birds, <laughs> I also like to photograph uh, difficult birds, uh, more brownish and more uh, uh, less colorful. 
but still very attractive. Uh, like the one on the left, uh, which is a moustache pop bird. They have a very special uh, personality. Uh, <clears throat> the one on the right is a very special bird, is a plumulated tree hunter. It lives in very dense vegetation, bamboo uh, stands, very difficult to photograph. Um, on the left side is a red faced spine tail, and on the right side, a uh, straight bill with you. Uh, wood creepers are very diverse in the Andes. This is a black banded wood creeper. This is an uncommon bird uh, from oak forests in the eastern Andes of Colombia. Wrens. <clears throat> Wrens are amazing. Uh, this is an endemic species of the western Andes photographed here by Doug Chisman in uh, his trip to Cerro Montezuma in the Western Andes, Mountain Chocó. <clears throat> Munchique woodwinds are a uh, strong endemic. Their distribution is very small in the Western Andes only. And they prefer landslides where the vegetation is just recovering. And they, they share the, the place with the gray-breasted woodbrim. But they, the gray-breasted woodbrim lives in mature or secondary forest, whereas the Munchique woodbrim prefers the landslides. Uh, it's a very special uh, adaptation. And they look very similar but the song is very different. And Chica Woodrun has a beautiful, beautiful song. This is the silvery throated spine tail, endemic from the Eastern Andes, <coughs> photographed near, Ch near Bogota in Chicasa National Park. <coughs> also a skulker, uh, moves through dense vegetation as a or the other spine tails, or most of them. This is a very special spine tail, the white whiskered spine tail. To my taste, the most beautiful of all spine tails in Colombia. He lives in the Caribbean region up north, and it's photographed here in the Guajira Peninsula. And it's from uh, <coughs> it's cropland, uh, semi dry. Uh, Woodland. Yellow chained spine tail, uh, relatively uh, common. And this is a very special bird from the mountain Choco. It's a full postated tree runner. This image is a bit soft, but uh, I like it. It's a difficult bird to photograph, um, but I know who has a better photo. Uh, Bob Lewis does. Uh, we took this photo on a trip to Cerro Montezuma on a day with a very soft, dim light. And uh, we were lucky that the bird spent uh, a good time near us. Uh, you would not find many, pho many photos of this bird in the web. This is a many striped canastero from the Paramo uh, Highlands of the Central Andes in a windy day. <clears throat> Grayish piclet, one, one more of the endemics. Very tiny, tiny uh, little uh, woodpecker. It's endemic to the Cauca Valley only. This is a male. Uh, the males have these yellow spots in the crown. Females don't. don't. Crowned chat turret. 
Chat tarants are one of my favorite birds. Uh, chat tarants are <clears throat> uh, small flycatchers. They are from the mountains. And they have very elegant distributions of their colors. They don't have sophisticated colors, but I find them very elegant. And Colombia has five species of chat tarants, and I wanted to photograph all of them. And here they are. On the left, upper left, the brown backed chat tarant is a chat tarant from the Param ecosystem. On the low left, uh, slated back chat tarant. They are always next to the water, to the streams. Upper right is a rufous breasted chat tarant. And low right is the yellow bellied chat tarant. They are all uh, forest type of birds. Uh, simple colors, but very elegant. I like to photograph birds uh, from the back. I find that their pose is very uh, special. This is a common uh, rusty margin flycatcher. And this is a plain cap ground tyrant. They live only above 4,000 meters up on the mountains. Vermilion flycatcher, you probably have seen this bird. Uh, very colorful, very nice, pretty. This is the male. Fork tail flycatcher, gorgeous little bird. And uh, I don't run away from dull color birds. Uh, this is a golden based granulate. Uh, I find them to be elegant as well. They sing uh, constantly from the canopy. <clears throat> and this is the extreme of the dull uh, colored birds. This is a tapaculo. Tapaculos are tiny little birds that live close to the ground on very dense vegetation. They move very fast. <clears throat> it's very difficult to follow them with the pins. Uh, the best way to see them is with uh, naked eyes. And the only way to photograph them is when they stop to sing on a branch. This is a Paramo de Paculo at Los Nevados National Park in the Central Land. And of course, the Ampitas with their very long legs. Ampitas are extremely attractive. <clears throat> Good birders always have them as big targets in their list. And uh, in Colombia, you will find many species of Ampitas in the Andes, on the mountains. Uh, on the left is the chestnut naped ampita. In the middle is an endemic ampita, the brown banded. On the right side is a very <coughs> uncommon um, ampita, the bicolor ampita, a near endemic bird. <coughs> this is a rufous ampita. Uh, rufous ampitas will be split very soon into many species. This is perhaps one of the most beautiful ampitas, the chestnut ground ampita. These are forest birds. They always live in the interior part of the forest. This is a small ampita, the hooded ampita, is a near endemic species, only from Venezuela and Colombia. And it was photographed here by Peter Howard Lishan. This is his photo. 
at Otunkin Bada Wildlife Sanctuary. Kude Zampita is very uncommon, and we were very lucky that the bird uh, presented and perched nicely uh, that day. <clears throat> this is a crescent faced Ampita. I took this photo not far from my home in 2011. At that moment, I was very proud of my photo. <laughs> this, is the, this, is, this was the most northern um, sighting of the species. It's a species that <clears throat> is uh, present in Colombia and Ecuador. But at that moment, it was the most northern population of the bird. And Ampitas are difficult to photograph in the forest. Since then, you can find many uh, good photos of this bird in the web because Colombia has developed Ampita feeding stations, which are like having a, a feeder for tanagers or for hummingbirds. Ampitas do come to feed on worms. And um, the technique of feeding ampitas to bring them in so that you can see them or you can photograph them was developed by a farmer, a campesino from Ecuador, Angel Paz. Angel Paz noticed that these birds like to come out of the forest into the potato crop to feed on the worms. And he saw that there were people, birders, that, that wanted to see the bird. So he thought that the, the bird could be, you know, habituated to worms. And he started to feed his ampitas on his farm. And he became very successful in, in doing that. So in Colombia, we have followed Angel Paz experience. And there are many, well, a good number of feeding stations for Ampitas in Colombia now. And uh, it's the best way to see them, and it's the best way to photograph them. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a video done by Peter Haverlichen in Rio Blanco. Rio Blanco is a cloud forest in the central Andes. This is Albedo, throwing worms to the chestnut brown and people. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to come this close to an ampita. You have to train them, feeding them every day at the same hour.
No me no me mira, ahí tengo una sonrisa a la cámara. Si sí, puedes dar con tu mano derecha un poquito más hacia, hacia, no, hacia, hacia abierto, que es lo mejor. Excelente. It's not easy to, to do this. Uh, there are competitors. Other birds come for the worms, like the great thrushes. And they become very dominant and aggressive over the young peoples. So, uh, we now have in Colombia uh, a, a good number of unfeeded feeding stations, and there are also some feeding stations for uh, wood quails. This is an endemic chestnut wood quail. <clears throat> uh, this photo was not done on a, on a feeding station. But if you want to photograph this quail, there's a new feeding station for the bird near Cali in the western end. Uh, this is a torrent duck, a beautiful duck from a fast flowing river. White cap dipper. Bantail one from the Sierra. Uh, from the Santa Marta Mountains is a range restricted one <clears throat> from the northern uh, Andes. On the left, that's the endemic Cauca one. There's now a very healthy population of Cauca one in Colombia. This bird was thought to be extinct but a population was rediscovered in the Otunquimbaya Wildlife Center. And this population came back from extinction because they had planted ash tree in the watershed. And it just happened that this bird, the Cauca one, loves to eat the young leaves and the flowers of the ash tree. On the right side, the Stygian owl. <clears throat> Burrowing owls from the Orinoco region. Antian pygmy owl. Roadside hawk. Raptors in the tropics. We have a lot of species, but they are difficult to see because they are very secretive in, in their behaviors. Masked flower piercer, beautiful bird. This is an endemic flower piercer. This is the chestnut bellied flower piercer photographed by Doug Chisman in his visit to the uh, Cerro Montezuma, Western Andes. Uh, <clears throat> this, is an, this is an endangered species. And it lives very high on the very top of Cerro Montezuma. <clears throat> Bark crested antrike, near endemic, relatively common in Colombia. Great Android. Tucan Barbet from the Chocó Mountains. And of course, the parrots and the parakeets. On the left, golden plumed parakeet and tangent. On the right side, the endemic Santa Marta parakeet from the Santa Marta Mountains. This is an endemic, beautiful, very nice parrot 
yellow ear parrot. There used to be a population of it in Ecuador, but it went extinct in Ecuador. So it was an ear endemic species, now only found in Colombia. From the high mountains. <clears throat> Rose-faced parrot from the Chocó jungles, shared with Panama and Ecuador. And this is the most special parrot in Colombia, and is one of the most uncommon and highly threatened parrots in the world photographed by Bob Lewis on our trip to the mountains above uh, the town of Santa Rosa in the Central Andes. Uh, <clears throat> I think that Bob was very lucky to get this close to this power. It's a high endemic. It's only found in the buffer zone of Los Nevados National Park. And to see this bird, you have to go up the mountain on a bad road. You have to wake up very early. You have to be on the right spot at six in the morning. And you have to be lucky enough that the bird flies by. But not only that, the, the bird lands somewhere near you. <laughs> so Bob, you have a magnificent photo, amazing. Uh, black billed mountain toucan. Uh, I think it's one of the most beautiful toucans, you know, blue, white, and high in the mountain in the cloud forest. Kill billed toucan. Toucans are beautiful. This is to many birders the rarest bird in Colombia is the greater side field. It's not endemic. It's also pre present in Ecuador and Venezuela, but extremely, extremely low populations. And uh, I ran into this bird on a bird in trip with uh, two birders from Chicago. And uh, we were very lucky. It's one of those encounters that you can have one one of these encounters in your in your lifetime, really. Um, it's a wood creeper, and uh, he was moving very calm on the mossy branches of Cerro Montezuma in the western Andes. Blue-billed curassow. This is an endemic. Curaçao, present only in the Magdalena Valley, photographed here at El Pau Hill Nature Reserve. Very uncommon as well. This is the female, and this is the male. There's a very good place to photograph this bird at El Pau Hill Reserve. Noble snipe. Andean duck. This is a relative uh, parent of uh, your ruddy duck. This is one of the most beautiful gaginals in Colombia, the spot flanked gaginal with a very green, bright uh, bill. And of course, uh, one has to take a look at the hummingbirds. Uh, there's more than 170 species of hummingbirds in Colombia. And uh, this is the Buffy helmet breast. This is the hummingbird of the logo of my company, of Bird Nutrients Colombia. It's an endemic bird, lives high up on the mountains at 4,000 meters, uh, 12,000 feet. On the top, the male, 
and below the female. For every 10 males that you see, that you see, you may encounter one female. Females are uncommon. They don't show themselves. And here is the Bobby Helmet Crest photographed by Peter, our relation. Peter, Peter wanted badly to photograph this bird, and we had to do several trips to Los Nevados. Because one day you get a misty or rainy day, and not a good light, and you have to be patient. And uh, yes, uh, on the second or third time that we try it, Peter bumped into one of, one of into this beautiful male, uh, not far from the car. This is a rainbow bearded thornbill. Purple back thornbill, big target for uh, listers, for birdies. Another big target for Peter, black pie public. Um, uncommon. We find the bird in those Nevadas. I was not optimistic, but Peter had done a good research and he knew where to find it. And the emerald, white neck Jacobin. When hummingbirds come to the feeders, they're easy to photograph and they give many opportunities. This is a golden bellied star from uh, an near endemic bird from the eastern Andes, uh, present only in Ecuador and Colombia. Brown wood nymph. Long tail silk. And this is a set of four pictures by Peter. Up left and right, uh, Rufus Gate Hill Star. And low left, pay good attention to that, sleep, that little hummingbird uh, low on the, on the left side. It's a tooth billed hummingbird. Uh, it's a hummingbird from the Choco uh, region. And it's only from very dark ravines. And uh, it has small teeth on the tip of the bill. It's uh, serrated, a uh, very special hummingbird. And Peter wanted badly to find this bird. And uh, we find it at the Anchicaja Valley in the Western Andes. And on the low right side, is a hummingbird, hummingbird very, very uncommon that Peter wanted to find. And uh, I had a previous encounter with this bird uh, years ago uh, in this locality. And uh, good enough, we went back there and we played the Andean Pygmy Owl. And I knew that this hummingbird uh, comes in to the tape of the Andean Big Owl. And uh, good enough, it showed up and Peter got this photo. You can see that it has an upturned tip on the pillow. Uh, Gordon headed Quetzal and Trogons, nice birds to look and photograph. This is a yellow crowned white star endemic to the Santa Marta Mountains. Remember, there are 23 endemics in the Santa Marta Mountains. And uh, blue nade corophonia, they come very well to feeders. This is one of the most beautiful birds in Colombia. It's the multicolored tanager. They are endemic. Only in the Western Andes and Central Andes as well. And uh, Steve wanted to photograph this bird. And 
On the first day of the trip, he got it. This photo is by Steve Zamek at uh, Laminga College above, above Cali, uh, a very good place to photograph tanagers. Uh, this bird was probably taken aback. White cap tanager. This is one of my favorite birds. I, I find them extremely beautiful. They're also uh, mountain birds. This is a vermilion cardinal from the northern uh, Caribbean region of Colombia, photographed at La Guajira Peninsula. This is the endemic red bellied grackle. Uh, you know, grackles to have, you know, black colors. This one has a bright red belly, extremely special. Uh, some birders say that this is the finest, finest endemic of Colombia, red belly grackles. <clears throat> uh, a few photos of uh, people that have traveled with us. Um, it was a very Nice party, party from the UK. Um, uh, Andy and Gil Flash, they are uh, bird photographers, editors of uh, bird books and journals. Uh, it was a typical trip, a 22 day trip. We covered 2,600 kilometers of roads and we registered 580 species. And of those, we photographed 369 species on that tree. <clears throat> Francesco Veronesi on the left is an Italian photographer. He's one of the bird, uh, one of the photographers that has photographed uh, uh, the largest number of bird species in the world. Uh, upright, uh, Richard Crossley, you probably know him, and James Curry. From Virgin Adventures TV. Low left, uh, Roger Necklace, excellent photographer from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, bird photography has become very popular in the Asiatic countries. Uh, we received groups from uh, China, Taiwan, Korea. And these are my favorite groups. Uh, uh, for many years, uh, we have received uh, <clears throat> friends of uh, Bob and Peter, and um, I have enjoyed a, a lot uh, their friendship. I have learned a lot from their photography, and uh, they have been followed by Doug and Gil Chisman. Uh, Doc wanted to photograph all the birds. Gail want, wanted to see them all. Uh, a nice combination of a photographer with a very strong, uh, decided birder. And we did a fantastic trip. Uh, lots of fun. And recently, uh, we received uh, Steve and Janie Samet. And we had a wonderful trip. I'm going to show you uh, some of their photos as well. Uh, Peter and Bob, I have much to owe you, uh, to your friendship and to your uh, enthusiasm and to your uh, love for birds. I really appreciate uh, uh, your friendship, amazing. Uh, this is a photo taken by uh, Bob Lewis uh, of an endemic uh, Sutian manager at Victoria Forest in the Magdalena Valley. This is a bird from the in interior, from the deepest part of the forest. So, so it's always on, on dark spots with not, you know, abundant light. In this occasion, uh, the bird stayed a lot of time with us, um, and uh, he gave uh, you know, good opportunities. And Bob, 
is an excellent job. Uh, I think this is one of the best photos of the bird. Another endemic yellow-headed brushfinch, brush uh, photographed by Bob Lewis at the <clears throat> Combeima Canyon in the state of Tolima. Um, this photo is by Steve Samick. Is a dwarf cuckoo. Dwarf cuckoos are are hard to find, much harder to photograph. And uh, we spend uh, a per a per amount of time uh, following this bird. It was a couple of birds. Um, they were, you know, responding to the playback, but not that much. But uh, uh, they managed to come close. And Steve was on the bird, and he, you know, took his time and patience and grabbed this magnificent photo. I think this is one of the best photos of the, of the species with the caterpillar on the video. Uh, it was at Sonsomosh. Golden colored mannequin. Oh, gorgeous little bird uh, from uh, Tinamu Lodge. Uh, and uh, finally, two photos by Steve of uh, little hummingbirds, uh, tourmaline San Angelo on the left, uh, velvet purple coronet, here endemic, on the right. And uh, thanks for your patience, uh, if you are still there. <laughs> and uh, I, my invitation is, you know, Colombia has the birds, and Colombia has the birders. And uh, you're welcome to come to the country. And uh, Colombians are nice people, bird loving people. And we are catching up with Peru, Ecuador, Panama, and Costa Rica. And uh, I think that Colombia is doing very well, developing uh, birding lodges and uh, birding places. So, uh, Thanks for having me a lot. I'm very uh, happy to be with you tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for that excellent presentation. Now, if you could mm -hmm. unshare your screen, Daniel. Um, and, and then for everyone else, um, we're gonna take questions. Uh, if you open up your chat window, um, and you'll find that, you know, either a, a little bubble that says chat, it might be under something that says more, but uh, you can type in your questions for Daniel and uh, we'll answer them as they come in. But uh, Daniel, while you were speaking, a couple questions came in. Um, the first one is from Sridhara. He says, excellent. How easy is it to travel within the country for bird photography? Um, it's, uh... It depends on, on how you design your itinerary, okay? Colombia is very diverse and um, you need to be smart, you know, and to move. Um, you know, the topography is Andean topography, curvy roads, but good roads, okay? Uh, we have an excellent, uh, road system. Uh, if you compare uh, Colombia with other countries in South America, Colombia is um, pretty, pretty developed, you know. After all, uh, Colombia is the fifth largest economy in Latin America. You, you know, uh, uh, you, you have first uh, Brazil and Mexico. And then you have Argentina and Chile, and Colombia comes uh, fifth. So we have a good infrastructure. Um, uh, and yes, uh, you can visit uh, many, many good birding spots if you know your route. You know, uh, you have to be efficient on your time. You don't want to spend a lot of time on the car 
uh, moving from one place to the other. So you need to have a compact itinerary. Uh, in my experience and what I have seen after many years of uh, guiding trips, uh, if you want to cover all of Colombia, you will need probably seven, eight trips because you know it's a complex geography. And so you want to make a trip or two to the Amazon and the Orinoco, a trip or two to the Andean region, a trip or two to the Chocó, and so on. So uh, yeah, uh, it's a very rich country. It has, it has many, many, many things to give. Thank you, Daniel. I would just like to add that you know, for Jane, you know, for mine and Jane's trip with you, you know, travel was very easy. Daniel drove us around. To each place. He's an excellent driver. He has a very comfortable car. And uh, the, the locations are pretty close to each other. You know, there's birds everywhere. And so we never had really long drives. It was, uh, it was quite easy. Uh, he picked us up from the airport. So um, yeah, it can be a very, a very easy trip to travel with him. Now the next question is from Vivek Tiwari. He says, hi, Daniel. Great talk. Just waiting to get to Columbia. Question, is there a sure site for a tawny tufted toucanet? And second question, and a good site to photograph the fiery topaz. Oh my God. <laughs> Those are two difficult birds. Uh, but you can see them in Mitu, in the, in the Colombian Amazon. Uh, Mitu would be the best place for it. Uh, in Mitu. Which, which one are you talking about now? The tawny uh, tufted toucanet or the fiery topaz? Both of them. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and um, in me too, uh, there's a spot uh, about mm, one hour and a half from town. You know, me too is a very small town. It's the capital city of the state of Baupes. And uh, you have to fly to me too. This is the Amazon. Uh, you cannot drive to the Amazon uh, and fly to it. Uh, it's a 55 minute flight from Bogota. And uh, in mid two, you can lodge in a small town hotel. And there's a very good spot or Fiori to pass uh, one hour and a half drive from town. Uh, the spot is called the uh, Puente Lata. It's a bridge, the tiny bridge uh, over a ravine. And the uh, Fiori to pass loves to come to the branches, you know, above the water to catch for insects, okay? He fly catches insects, okay? Early in the morning. So you wake up early and you are at 6 a.m. standing on the bridge, you will have a fairly good chance to see the, the bird. Now the tawny tufted to connect, those are difficult birds because those two canets are from the canopy. Okay, they move on the uh, treetops. And this is a tall canopy. And uh, the best way is to call them in with playback. <clears throat> they have a very low pitch call, like a <laughs> And that's what they do. You know? And, uh, and, but the, the voice, you know, it transmits, okay? Not much, but what I, what I have found is that if you have a good local Indian guide, okay? Gosh, those guys are very good at catching the bird, bird, bird. and they know the bird. They know their behavior and they know how to get to it. 
So I will, I will say the key thing with the Tucanet uh, is to have a good local Indian guy with you. But me too is a very good place for it as well. Uh, in my last uh, four or five trips to me too, uh, we have never missed it. But you have to work for it. It's not an easy book. But if you work for it, you will get it. Thank you, Daniel. Next question <clears throat> is from Lonnie. Uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you, Daniel. How safe is it to travel in the area that you've described? Colombia uh, is a different country today. Uh, since the uh, signing of the peace agreement between the national, national government and the FARC leftist uh, insurgent group, uh, the country has changed dramatically. Okay, I can tell you that we live in a new country. This is a completely different country. Uh, the peace agreement was signed uh, four years ago in 2016. And uh, since then, many, many, many places in the country are completely safe to travel. We still have some dissident groups that move away from the peace agreement and they are located in the boundary with Ecuador and boundary with Venezuela. So we don't travel to those places, okay? Uh, and anyway, they're very far and they're not easy to reach. And uh, so the reason that these groups are next to the boundary with Ecuador and Venezuela is because they can hide in those countries. Okay, so they hide and they um, stay away. And uh, I will say that you can travel safely through 95 or 90% of the country. All the best birding localities are completely safe. Of course, we do have common delinquency as in any other country, okay, in the, in the world. And so, you know, uh, stay away from bad neighborhoods in the cities. And uh, otherwise, you would be, you would do very well, no problem. Colombia is a different country. Okay, the next question is from Bill. It says, wonderful presentation, Daniel. Do you ever use field flash when photographing the birds? I used to do field flash um, some years ago. And uh, I like it. But, I have developed a taste for, you know, complete natural light. And um, I don't know, I'm not using uh, field flash anymore. I dropped using it for about uh, five years ago. Okay, and uh, a comment from Sridhara, whose question you answered earlier, he says, Wow, thanks for the detailed reply. Columbia is now the top in my list. Mm -hmm. Now a question from uh, Renee. What time of year is best for birding or visiting in Colombia? Very good question. Um, it depends on the region that you want to travel to because the distribution of rains is different between regions. For, for example, in the Andean region, we have a bimodal distribution of rains. That means that we have two rainy peaks in a year. And the rainy season in the Andes is 
on um, April and May, one of the rainy seasons. And then it repeats on October, November, okay? So if you prefer to avoid rains, don't come on, the, on those months. But, but any other month will be perfect, okay? Uh, many birders come to Colombia from November to April. Uh, but just because that's when you have the cold weather up there. <laughs> uh, now, if you go to the Orinoco or to the Amazon region, it's a different story because the distribution of rain is unimodal. That means you have a one prolonged, long rainy season on the Orinoco and the Amazon. And, and that on, on the Orinoco, for example, the rainy season goes from late April to November. Between April and November, all the savannas are flooded. The roads become very tough. You can get stuck easily on any of those roads if you go on the rainy season. But the dry season goes from early December to May. So if you organize your trip to the Orinoco on those months, easy travel, good roads, excellent birding. So I will say it depends on the region, okay? You need to know uh, the weather patterns for each region. Okay, thank you, Daniel. That's all the questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, so thanks everyone for showing up tonight and uh, joining our meeting and thank you so much Daniel for this presentation. We really appreciate it. And uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you guys.